listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. We have another show lined up for y'all. Just like any other show, we have a special guest. Our guest for today is Sherry Anna Boyle. She is going to talk to us about her new book, recent book that has been released back on Amazon. If you want to get it right now, you can get it because it's energy and action, the power of emotions and intuition to cultivate peace and freedom. You can go visit her website, SherryAnnaBoyle.com. We're going to learn everything about her. She is the founder of Emotional Detox Coaching, Cleanse Method, and author of 10 books. So first and foremost, Sherry Anna, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate your time. (laughs) I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing well. Tell us a little bit about your background. You are the creator, like I said, of the Emotional Detox book series and uh, also coaching. And man, you have 10 books out there that people can check out. So tell us a little bit about how you got started. Sure. Well, I've been in the field since the beginning. I've worked in the schools as a school psychologist and I went into parent education And then I took a leave of absence from my job and I was having my own children and I decided to start writing and I wrote a book. I self-published it. It was basically about schools and, and tools and strategies. And the premise of the book was based on the fact that, you know, we give people all these tools and ideas and things, curriculums and things like that. But really what powers it all is us. I mean, we're, we're sort of the energy behind anything, whether something's going to work or not. And after I wrote that book, I was actually approached by a publisher and they asked me to write for them. And so I wrote, I wrote my first, my first book was actually a parenting book and the conscious parenting guide to childhood anxiety. And then one thing led to the other and I started writing more books. And here I am now with a 10th book, which is called Energy in Action like you said, the power of emotions and intuition to cultivate peace and freedom. And that book has, similar to the Emotional Detox book series, I created a system for teaching people how to process their emotions because a lot of us just weren't taught how to do that. So become kind of my signature. When it comes to the, the book, Energy in Action, can you explain some of the challenges that people often face when they're trying to, you know, put the concept of the universe responding to feelings into practice and how that's discussed? Yeah, I think that the common thing is, and what that book looks at is the spiritual laws of the universe, which we're, we've all, we've all been introduced to most, many people have because the movie, the secret came out and that was sort of our, the big thing where everyone was interested in, wow, I actually, I actually can create my life here. Like it's, it's not chance. Like I actually have an influence over what happens and what I create and, and my thoughts and my feelings have an impact on that. So energy in action takes that further because again, what I've learned is many people actually don't know how to feel or process their emotions. And in my experience, what I've seen in the clients I work with and students is that when I guide them through the steps of emotional processing, which is featured in all many of the last four books, including Energy in Action, and I help them to focus on light. And light is what you're going to get in that book. And what I mean by light, it's the energy of light as you can imagine, feels a heck of a lot different than when something is heavy, dense, or or depressed, or anxious kind of energy. So I teach them to focus on energy that is high vibrational and allow themselves to also feel at the same time and let that be the, the, the birthing place for what you're creating. So in some of the older teachings, I'll call them older because it was years ago when The Secret came out, they were taught to focus on our thoughts. But what I have found is that when people process their emotions, your thoughts change automatically. And so my message is why focus on thoughts when feelings can do that effortlessly 
And the spiritual laws of the universe teach us that, that this, this doesn't come with a lot of effort, this creative thing. In fact, sometimes we push against ourselves to push against our abilities because with effort comes a little bit of doubt and a little bit of fear and a little bit of control. And so it's not that there's not any effort. You have to get up and you have to focus and pay attention and have discernment and you have to make a lot of choices along the way and stand in your power. But that was very, very different than working. And so an energy in action it really kind of redefine this idea that we have to constantly be working to make anything of ourselves, that a lot of the work, well, I won't use the word work, the energy in action is ha- it happens to be more internal. It's your emotions in movement and then allow yourself to be guided to the next step and the next step and the next step and let it unfold because I don't think we have any idea, most of us, just how much potential we truly have. I mean, it is, it is incredible. I, I don't think we can scratch the surface or have scratched the surface in our abilities in terms of manifesting. I think in some ways when we say, oh, I want to manifest a car, I, yeah, that's great, but I, I actually think it's limiting yourself. I think it can go bigger than that. I think we cannot just manifest for ourselves, but I think that we can manifest changes globally, worldwide. And when we start to open up our minds in that way and our energy in that way, that's when things really start to shift in a new, on a new pathway here. And that's what I believe the spiritual laws are trying to guide us. It wasn't just singular. Oh, I'll help you manifest the laws, which are based on ancient teachings, thousands of years old. And they were never supposed to be owned by anyone. There was never supposed to be ego involved. Those universal principles, and they're not based on a religion, they were designed for everyone. And they really, what they lead us back to is oneness. This on Refocus Radio, talk to our guest, Sherrianna Boyle. And you being a, um, a coach, you were voted top 25 coaches in Los Angeles Magazine. And you talked about Bigger, like dream bigger, you know, not just settle for a car, but go for something bigger than that. When it comes to being in flow and having that clarity on how we are in that, you know, moment of living, you have a system called the cleanse system. You mentioned that in your in your book as well. What is that cleanse system and how does that help people in preparing to uh, use that energy to move? So the cleanse is a seven-step mindful process that begins with the C and it ends with the E and it's an acronym. And that helps us remember the steps. You just say to yourself, cleanse. So the first step is clear reactivity. And that's, and I give many, many suggestions for that. And by the way, this is all written out in energy in action. So there's 52 cleanses and every cleanse is, there's 13 spiritual laws. And within each law, I give you specific, specific cleanses to cleanse in, according, in accordance with that law. So for example, the spiritual law, we'll call it the law of attraction because that's what everybody's kind of used to hearing about. The, the spiritual law of attraction. Okay, well, that can bring up a lot of stuff for people. One, when we start thinking, okay, I have to attract this and do better at this, sometimes it brings up some insecurity. It can bring up even some lack. I have to overcome this, that, and all of these things can be cleansed. So basically, they're tr- they can be triggers, or they can be reactions, or they can be beliefs, or they can be stories and narratives. They can even be things through the genetic line. And so when you're going through the cleanse, these steps we're taking that's being taken into account for everything, knowing that okay, this is what needs to be when I use the term cleanse, transformed. It means taking this energy of insecurity or fear or doubt or lack and transforming this feeling because feeling's the root of everything. This feeling that sometimes people can't shake it. They're like, no matter what I do, I have this feeling I'm not good enough. We have to transform those feelings. And then that's what cleanse does, seven steps. 
And then you're in alignment. Then you get a new understanding of the spiritual law of attraction, which I talk about in energy and action. So it's clear reactivity, step one, which means you got to get in your body. You have to get grounded. You have to help. You have to feel safe. Step two is look inward, which is about, okay, let me acknowledge my feelings in a way that doesn't re-traumatize myself or anybody else for that matter. Because sometimes the way we react to our feelings, it hurts us and it self-sabotages. And sometimes we can hurt others too in the process. E is emit. Now we're going to increase vibration in the body. I use tools like, like mantras. I wrote a book on mantras so I know how sacred they are, how effective they are. E, and now we're in A. A is about the art of visualization. There's a lot of science around this, being able to imagine. Now we're reprogramming our subconscious mind. N is nourish. We have to learn how to meditate a little bit. So we learn to absorb. It's like, it's like watering a plant, but the, but the roots don't actually get the water. We have to give our root system the water. We're our internal system so we can get grounded in it, so we can grow, so we can feel anchored. That's the N. S is surrender, which is a part of manifesting. Surrender. And I give some, some ways that people can do that. And the final step is E, which is ease. And ease means I am that. I don't have to try to be it. I don't have to work at it. I don't have to hope or wish or pray. I am that. I become one. And in energy and action, it's all about that creative source energy that we're all connected to. When people uh, read this book, and they put themselves in their, you know, in their own shoes, their own path of life, you know, own story. What do you hope that they will be able to learn to start applying, even when it comes to the most basic level? Well, I know for me, uh, it really needed to be spelled out. You know, I think sometimes in the spiritual world and even in the psychology world, it can get a little, uh, at least for me, it was like a little bit, it didn't feel practical, not for my lifestyle, not for, it, it felt maybe feasible for people maybe that had a kind of lifestyle that could do all those practices. But for me, it was not, I just wasn't there. And so that's how I got into this is, and I think that's why my emotional detox book series caught on was people could actually get it. They could, they're like, okay, I get it. I know how to apply it. I know what you mean by emotional processing. I know how I can use this in my own life and cleanse. And so for energy and action, there's the 52. I literally wrote them out. And I will actually still open my own book in the morning because each one comes with a little story. And it's a story of different clients I've had. But those stories are like mirrors. They re remind us, it's like, I don't know if you've ever been like in a circle of people and someone's talking and you can so relate or you saw a movie and you could so relate to the character or you hear a song and you could so relate. That's such an important part of emotional processing is there's this, there's this piece where we have to be able to relate it to our own lives. And so it's a system that talks about day to day and then talk about the spiritual laws. So it doesn't feel like it's something outside of us. And the process only takes maybe five to 10 minutes a day. But again, you're taught in energy and action to focus on light, light. And I describe every single light and what that does and what it's connected to. It's all connected to high vibrational, loving energy. And if we can just shift that and more important, feel that what ends up happening, you'll notice in the book is that I encourage people to take it in, not just for you, but for everybody on the planet, because not everybody has a voice, not, not everybody's as blessed to have a platform or a book or a, a way they can talk about things. So we have to kind of open it up and take these practices and feed the greater good. And we will be blessed for that. We will be rewarded for that. I, I know that for a fact. I know 
um, that when truly when it, it's that old, you know, it will come back to you. And I, I do think that's a big part of manifesting. When practicing the tools that you provide, uh, someone will be like, man, this is either easy or the opposite of easy. For those who are new to learning this, how do you suggest that they approach the steps and going through the process that you provide in your book? That's a good question. I think the, I would just read the book, first of all, in the beginning, so you understand what the book is, is about. But I also think once you, you see what you're drawn to. So, for example, there's 13 laws. And there's 13 different light I talk about. So, for example, there's a ray of light called the diamond ray. And diamonds, I mean, we know they mean a lot. They, they have all different meanings, right? They have the meaning of, of commitment and, and, but yet they're also very solid and they're hard to break diamond. That's why we put them in a ring if we have a diamond ring. And there's something called the diamond ray of light. And the diamond ray of light is really powerful because it helps us with generational healing and anything that's been handed down. And so focusing on this beautiful diamond ray of light, and it kind of reminds me when I feel it, when I touch base with it, it's like one of those prisms when you see the light glimmering through and it flashes different colors. And you can kind of feel the energy of that. So the diamond ray of light is, I paired everything with a law, is associated with the law of divine oneness. And so what they're going to do is, if you just say you're drawn to, oh, I'm drawn to the diamond ray. Okay, then work with it. There's going to be cleanses written out for that, where it's going to explain again the story. This is, this is how the diamond ray can be helpful to you in your life. And it's powerful. I don't know if you can feel it as I'm even talking. Do you feel energy at all? <laughs> Do you yeah. feel vibration? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know how they say read the room. Well, I think you can uh, always have a sense of something. Yeah, do you do you sense and feel when I say the diamond ray of light? Do you sense and sense? Do you, do you feel or your audience, do you feel energy? around you or around your head, around your body, you know, just sense and feel it. Then, you know, these things, they're no joke. I think people are like, oh, yeah, I'm making, we're making this up. It's just my imagination, but not so much. You know, the, there's just, the research is really just starting to happen on this metaphysical stuff and this ability to sense and feel things. You know, we have been so suppressed. And our emotions in particular, we have been told this is good and this is bad. And my motto is all emotions are good. Every single one of them, even the anger, the sadness, all of it, it, it they're good so long, that, meaning they're valuable. So long as you take a moment to process them and we have these light sources available to us and we can tap into them. And believe me, these kinds of things, when I went through history and I really researched the rays of light, a lot of these things were suppressed and kept secret because they're so powerful. You know, it's, it's all control. And now they're not so secret anymore. People are open to energy healing. They're open to feeling. They're open to connecting on a, with their higher self and abilities. And that's what's going to make the difference here. And so they're realizing, oh, wow, I, I do have abilities beyond what I've been told, beyond the human experience. I'm more than just this body in this life, in these set of circumstances, and I can go to another uh, higher consciousness, and I can deal with things in a whole other way, and it will serve me and, and my family. So I would say to answer your question, it's go to what you're drawn to, go to what feels right for you. I always think that's important to not, to just do, if you're drawn to it, I would go for it. It can never hurt you. And it's all sourced by, by love, pure love. 
And I think it's the way when I've done energy healing for a long time, and I used to even get a little spooked out by it and afraid of it and try to fix this person, that person. We don't fix anybody. If, we're, if we go into that fixed mindset, we're just going to spin our wheels. We have to learn to work with these higher abilities. And and through shows like yourself, that's how it happens is we gain a little bit of awareness. We get a little bit more awareness. We feel calmer. We're like, Okay, I all right. I and and so you got to find like your your audience. You you've found someone you can click with, someone you feel comfortable with, someone you feel safe with, and and that's so important. And that's what the cleanse can do for people is it gives you a safe because it's the same every time. <laughs> the C L E A N S E the cleanse. It's always going to be the same. I'm never going to change that on you. I've written it in four books. Because consistency brings that trust in. Now, there's different variations so you don't get bored and you keep growing. So energy in action is the is the sort of the different variation from emotional detox is going to is a little bit more cut and dry. Energy in action. Now we're using light and high vibrational energy to make changes and positive changes in our lives. Once again, talking to our guest today, Sherrianna Boyle. You can go to her website, sherriannaboyle.com, and get the book that is on Amazon that we're talking about, Energy in Action. And when you see your career, you've been doing this for a while. You've been able to work with thousands of students and clients over, well, over a decade with your private uh, practice. And when you see how you've been able to use these practices throughout your life, how do you reflect knowing that you were able to take part of this journey, building your life, building your success, building your platforms, and how people who read the book can do the same with their life? I think it it helps keep you centered emotionally and focused on what's important. I think sometimes we look out a little bit like our trajectory is we, I want to go here and I want to go there and I want to be this and I want to be that. And that's, that's all well and good. But I think what happens when you process your emotions, it's kind of like coming home. It's like, it's coming home to like, I don't have to leave. I don't have to leave to feel better. I can come home means like a state of mind, a state of consciousness, a state of being, a state of oneness. And, and you do that enough times and you start to learn how to uh, love yourself, right? And also how to be patient and how to develop qualities so that you can have healthy relationships. You can have fun, I think, for me and the students I see and the message I try to give to people is emotional processing doesn't have to suck and it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to meet me and you have to live it through anything. In fact, I don't recommend it, but you can actually have fun and laugh along the way. And, and so I think that's the big thing is just coming home to yourself and knowing that that's enough, you know, your consciousness that you already are perfect and whole and complete and beautiful. Um, and you just, you came here to learn some things. And, and so some of it might be to process your emotions. I know for me, I must've really not been doing a great job at in another life because boy, did I come into this life? That's all I'm focusing on. So <laughs> I must have really stunk at it somewhere along the line. I know even in this lifetime, I was not so good at it. I was really good at uh, minimizing it and ignoring I, denial was my big thing. Just pretend like it didn't, no, not, I can't see it. It's like closing your ears and shutting your eyes. I can't see you. I can't see you. You know, that was me until life falls apart. And then you're like, oh crap, I have to see it. And and that's okay. As long as what's important is that you do, you learn some things along the way. 
And speaking, learning along the way, energy and action, we talked about the whole show, is key, action. Why is it important for us to always learn how to move on versus, you know, sometimes we get tempted to just shut down, not move at all. And that inaction can kind of create those emotions to maybe, I don't know, stockpile to where sooner or later we're going to have to go through those uh, emotions and figure out how we can get out of that, uh, that funk, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how we all can get out of it. You know, it, it's, but it does help as an individual. You're contributing to the, the bigger picture. But let's keep each other in mind while we're at it. Let's not forget that, yes, it can help you, but it can also serve the greater good for all. And and that's really the true route to freedom is when everybody's able to get out from under some of the things that they've experienced. And, it's, and it requires those of us who are practicing to continue to practice to be patient and loving and compassionate. Because just because we have, you know, some people have systems for processing their emotions or self-care, it, it doesn't mean we don't have our own thing to work on in terms of non-judgment. And because, again, it, it all spirals back and nobody's free until we're all free. So there's, there's, there's always more to, to move through. It's not about perfect or... Um, being at, at a certain level of, in your place, that will all come. I would say that's the easy part. Making money and all that's the easy part. But that will come. That will, uh, if you want the car, have that, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Just, and you have to trust that when you process your emotions, that will, you, you create a safety, a confidence, you you be, you really do begin to become in alignment with the spiritual laws and learn to trust and listen because there's something called like the law of rhythm. We all go out of balance. That's not going to stop. But if there's a reason we go out of balance, so we learn and grow, and then when we go back into balance, we're in a whole different spot. So once you learn these laws. You learn, okay, here's where I'm at, and that's okay, because I know I'm going to go back into rhythm. I'm going to get my groove on, and and things are, everything is, everything is in divine order. But emotional processing is a priority. That's what's most important, because it connects you to God. It connects you to your creator. If you're not feeling, you're not truly feeling fully connected in the way that you can be. It's a good point where you said about the rhythm because uh, I never met a person who has a favorite song that has no rhythm. Mm. <laughs> you know? Because mm-hmm. you're talking about connection and uh, whatever you connect to, whether it's a song, whether it's a movie, whether it's a book, whether it's a show, whether it's a person, it's because something in that, like you said earlier, you can relate to it. And since you can relate to it, you appreciate it a lot more. And when mm-hmm. that connection connects, it's like, boom, fireworks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the laws teach us that, the spiritual laws. Once again, people go uh, visit your website. It's uh, sherryannaboyle.com, or they can get the book, Energy and Action, on Amazon. It's the power of emotions and intuition to cultivate peace and freedom. Once again, we've been talking to Sherrianna. How can people stay in touch if they want to book you for, you also on your website real quick, you, you offer uh, the Cleanse Method certification course. I do, how, yeah. How can they be Yeah, a part I'm certifying of people now. Yeah, it took me a while to get there and I'm there. <laughs> yeah, they can go to the course I will, and you can see what, how I, I really break the method down. It's in the books but it's not broken down in the way that I do in the course because you really get to work with every single step. And in the end, if you're a coach or you're a therapist or if you're just someone that loves to learn, 
and you want to get certified, it's a self-guided course. I do pop in there. There's virtual chats and things and check on you (laughs) and see how you're doing and, and watch your progress. But it's otherwise it's a self-guided. And in the end, I think it's, can really help you stand out in the world. I know I have three daughters and they're trying to find their way. And I am also a psychology professor and a lot of my students, all different ages are working on their goals. And it's just some, you know, when I developed it, I kind of thought of people, how they, how, how can you stand out? How can you say, okay, I have this extra Thing. And I think the cleanse is one way you can do that. You can say I'm certified in the cleanse method, which is a method for emotional processing. And I think that's very attractive because I think it's a lot of, a lot of the conflict that happens at the workplace or, or people getting sick or run down is, is related to emotions, is related to not, not knowing how to work through things. It can, it can affect definitely affect your your immune system. I talk about that in the certification. I show research on that. So I just think there's a lot of, it's time for someone to create something where people can learn how to process their emotions and also use it to their advantage in their own lives. Been listening to Audrey Focus Radio talking to our guest today, Sherry Annie. You can pick up her book. You can get it anywhere. But if you want to go to Amazon, just go there and get energy and action, the power of emotions and intuition to cultivate peace and freedom. Once again, Sherry Anna, thank you for your time. Thank you so much.